please. Oh, clicker. <laughs> Thank you, David, and uh, good afternoon, friends. Without much uh, ado, I can get on. I have no conflicts of interest, and no. so are the authors in the paper. Uh, a brief introduction f about India for those who are not aware. It's, it's a fairly large country with uh, about 18% of the world's population. A lot of administrative divisions, lots of languages, one, more than 1.2 million people. And uh, importantly, about 55% of people employed are in agriculture. Uh, some more uh, uh, facts. Literacy rate is improved over the years, but still uh, it is only 65% in women, and particularly rural elderly women, it is much lower than 30%. Child sex ratio is falling, which indicates there is discrimination against the girl child. Employment rates among women are very low, which means they are dependent on others. And most importantly, as far as the health is concerned, there is some sort of a dichotomy because health policies are mainly made by the center, whereas health delivery is carried out by the state. And if there is different political parties at the two places, sometimes there are issues. Uh, this is an important slide because it uh, tells you about how the, you know, the urbanization of India has happened over the years. And you can see that the EAG states, which locally we call as Bimaru states, they are economically backward states. They, they have a nice name called EAG. And th in that, those states, even now, 80% of the people live in the villages. And we know that most cancer centers, almost all of them are in urban areas, so they really need to travel a long distance. <coughs> Uh, this was an interesting dichotomy that uh, showed up in the last uh, survey done on, uh, by the Department of Health. And that is among the deprived groups, low BMI malnutrition is very, very common, whereas among the quarter that is uh, the quintile that is uh, well off, you see that more than 30% of them are tending towards obesity. So we have the double whammy. This is some uh, slightly old data that shows that, uh, you know, among treatable cancers, which currently we can say are treatable with good survival rates, like cervix, breast, oral cancers, colorectal, lymphomas. <coughs> Across India, from the Barshi, which is a rural area, Bhopal, which was famous after the carbide disaster, and Mumbai, highly urbanized, that the results are far below what one sees in Western countries. And if you look specifically at colon cancer, you see that the rural uh, survival, five-year survival is really dismal. Even in Mumbai, it is below 30%, whereas rest over, it's more than 70%. And you can compare it with other Asian countries like Manila, Shanghai, Singapore, Seoul, where it's far better. So uh, what about the facts and figures regarding the cancer burden in India? Uh, this is, uh, most of the data is drawn from the cancer incidents in the five continents and the Globocan, which has estimated the results. They have used uh, 12, uh, 12 population-based registries. Now there are more than 30 of them operational, but 12 of them, the data quality is good and that has been used to estimate. But I must tell you that out of these 12, eight of them are located in the south or in, in the west. <clears throat> and therefore, there will be a lot of problems about extrapolating this for the rest of the country. Although uh, Freddie Bray and his team at the IARC have tried to adjust for all the issues regarding rural urban and other things, but nonetheless, there are limitations. <clears throat> So between the various uh, geographical regions, you see there are big differences. For example, 
Barshi, which is a rural uh, registry near Mumbai, you can see the total cancer rates uh, is just about 40 per 100,000. On the other hand, Mizoram, which is the extreme border of uh, northeastern uh, border of India, you see that the cancer rates are very high. <coughs> Trivandrum, which is uh, southernmost tip on the west coast, is also somewhat higher, and then there is a whole range in between. So this Amalekai is again a rural registry, Barshi is a rural registry, the rest of it is all uh, urban, and these are two state-based registries. <clears throat> this is an important slide, I would say, that looking at uh, the incidence of cancer as per age groups, and you see that for some reason, I think God has been kind on Indians, the cancer rates are still very low, even at older age, when you compare it with China, with uh, Russia, and Europe, and U.S. The reasons for this, I think, need investigation. <clears throat> And particularly the digestive cancers, you can see that in China, all, this is all digestive cancers put together, starting with colorectal at the base and pancreas right on top. You can see it's about 26 percent, uh, 26 per 100,000, whereas China it is more than 100 per 100, four times higher in men. And you can see that actually in most countries, the burden of colorectal cancer alone is almost equal to the burden of GI cancer in, in India. And this, I believe, is mainly due to the dietary factors, protective uh, elements in the diet. <clears throat> when we compare the Indian uh, incidence and mortality between the degree of development, very high human development index, you see that the age standardized rates for incidence is very high and you compare it with 94 in India, and mortality is low, so there is a very good uh, mortality to incidence ratio. On the other hand, with India, you see that it is like the low human index, or somewhere between middle and low HDI areas, with almost two-thirds of the uh, number of deaths compared to the incidence. <coughs> And variation in mortality is seen across India, and this is actually data from the Million Death Study, which was published in Lancet a few years ago. And here again, you see that uh, the EAG states have lower cancer mortality. They have lower cancer incidence, I suppose. And the northeastern states, which I showed you just now, having very high incidence. One thing that showed up in the million death study, because we don't have a nationally representative data, and the million death study sampled units all over India, and what it, what it really showed, which is important, is that the rural cancer deaths are far higher than the urban cancer deaths. So to think that in rural, can, uh, rural India the cancer is less may be partly true, but in terms of mortality, there is no difference. And this again, you know, goes back to my previous slides. Most people live in India and they have problems with access for good cancer care. <clears throat> if we look at where the top 10 cancers, the most recent data from Globocan, you see that in men, the one in blue, among the incidents, lung is number one. It is about 11 per 100,000. And then we have oral cavity. Mo both of them linked to tobacco, stomach, colorectal cancer has moved up to number four position, and then we have several others, many of which are directly linked to tobacco or infections. In terms of mortality, it is more or less the same, lung being the leading uh, cause of deaths in men. In women, which is in this pink color, breast has become the number one cancer, followed closely by cervix, and actually, if you see the breast cancer incidence is, uh, you know, more than the total GI cancer incidence in women. <clears throat> the burden of cancer is huge. There is more than a million uh, people affected with cancer every year. And you see here that the breast cancer burden is very, very huge, almost um, 150,000 
people followed by cervix, oral cavity, lung, stomach, and the others. In terms of mortality, it is very similar. You still see very high mortality from breast cancer. It is slightly above cervix cancer, although we know that breast cancer is so much more controllable and manageable. So there is a big issue and there is a lot we need to do to improve the survival rates. <coughs> and because of high mortality rates, with the exception of uh, breast cancer, where there is about 400,000 people, uh, prevalent uh, women, and cervix, you see for, for the rest of the cancers, because of very high mortality rate, the prevalence is somewhat lower. And that is because people die very soon and there is no uh, back, uh, you know, survivors. It's predicted uh, based on the global can data and the trends of the past that the cancer burden will both in men and women and cancer mortality will rise in the next 20 years and it will almost uh, be slightly less than doubling over the next 20 years. This is purely due to the growth of the population and aging of the population. But I'm sure that there would be uh, some changes, like we have seen in the GI tract, the esophagus has dropped, stomach is dropping, but liver cancer is rising, breast cancer has overtaken cervix. So there are, between cancers, there would be variations. But overall, if one looks at the cancer burden for planning treatments, then this is what is going to happen. <coughs> the Million death study also showed uh, some very interesting uh, data with regards to survival and mortality and in terms of the education status. And you can see that if those who are illiterate, and let me tell you, a lot of elderly people, men and women, are still uh, you know, illiterate. The cancer deaths in males and women, total cancer deaths, tobacco-related cancer deaths, and infection-related cancer deaths, all of them are higher when you compare it with people who have finished their high school. And so this is again a ch challenge for those of us trying to reduce cancer burden in India. Coming uh, to the delivery of care, we have uh, 381 approved medical colleges in India, near about 50,000 medical students passing out every year. However, I must point out that only nine medical colleges actually have the three departments that manages oncology in the same campus, that is surgical oncology, medical oncology, and radiation oncology. As a result, most of the students have no exposure to radiotherapy. Most, almost nine out of 10, have no ex a visit of a multidisciplinary clinic. MDTs don't exist in most of the medical colleges, and patients are managed on basis of individual uh, consultants and there is a very severe shortage of oncologists in India. This is the distribution of uh, various uh, oncology seats. They are all three-year training pro formal training programs, and you can see that with the exception of radiation oncology, where there are a sufficient number of uh, students specializing, there is a severe shortfall. Uh, there is a skewed distribution of facilities and training facilities in India. What this graph actually shows is that I've divided India into five regions. Actually, there are six. The northeast is considered as a separate region. However, because the population is north, I've clubbed the northeast along with east. And we looked at the total burden of cancer, the total population, the total number of seats, the total number of academic departments and the total number of radiotherapy units in the country. And we distributed the, this the same on basis of these five regions. So this bar tells you the number of cancer deaths, whatever is the total in the country, which is about 77 uh, lakhs. Uh, we have about 22% is in the east population, about 26% of the 1.2 billion people are in the east, but only about 10 to 12% of the radiotherapy centers, teaching departments, and oncology fellowships are running from this. In other words, people from east 
the patients have to go far away to the rest of the country to get treatment. They spend a lot of money on travel and stay and things like that. And students also, the medical students also need to travel to other parts to get proper training. So you see that in the east and central regions, there is a big, much bigger deficiency for you know, the treatment and training facilities. <coughs> And this is a graph just tells you the distances that people have to come from east, say from Bengal to Mumbai, or from Uttar Pradesh or Bihar to Mumbai. And similarly, from northeast, they very uh, commonly go to Chennai or Vellore. And these are some of the common routes taken by patients. And they literally cover thousands of kilometers, very often by a long journey, uh, a railway journey, uh, to come and go. So a few summary slides. One is that I believe that cancer care in India is like an iceberg. What we see in our teaching hospitals among the centers in the national cancer grid and those in the private is only just the tip of the iceberg. A vast majority of patients, several hundred thousands, are unable to get good cancer care, unable to get basic palliative care, unable to be screened for something which we are all the time saying is uh, we are able to uh, screen and many of them are forced to seek this complementary and alternative forms of medicine what we call Ayush, Ayurveda, Yunani, uh, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. As a result a number of these patients they wait and wait and wait till the cancer is unbearable and that is when they show up in the uh, uh, allopathic hospitals. The other important thing I think we all need to, uh, we know about uh, the six blind men and the elephant, and uh, cancer, I believe, is just one of those huge problems that public health uh, people are uh, you know, looking at. Although we are focused on cancer, uh, I think we need to keep that in mind, that we have a huge problem of malnutrition, infections, chronic renal disease and so on, and that many risk factors are common, particularly tobacco, infections, alcohol, physical inactivity, etc. Also believe that poor health literacy is contributing to a lot of this. And therefore, I think we need to work with other colleagues uh, if we have to really uh, improve outcomes at, a, at the kind of uh, resources that are available to us. So to summarize, Cancer incidence is lower in India compared to the world average. Cancer mortality is higher and it's very close to the world average. The absolute burden from cancer is huge because of India's big population. The bu burden is predicted to nearly double in the next 20 years. Main risk factors are tobacco followed by infections. There is a severe shortage of cancer treating and cancer training facilities in India. There is a skewed distribution of facilities for treating and training uh, younger doctors. <coughs> cancer care, this I will not touch because it's going to be covered in the subsequent speakers. Most of it is out of pocket and it is improvising many uh, families. They get depleted because of the travel and uh, because of the poor outcomes. And both central and state government should take uh, note of these and must intervene urgently. Uh, I'd like to thank all the collaborators, particularly the international partners, Richard, with whom we worked very closely, and thank you very much. And if any of you would come to Calcutta, please do visit my center. Thank you.